Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Polyriff and welcome. Here we are playing Minecraft <laughs> and this is modded. Yeah, you know, the game type where the whole objective is to eventually get yourself to a point where you're just not playing the game anymore because everything's automated. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Now, nah, it's not quite like that, I suppose, but that's pretty much what's going on. Anyway, guys, what I've got going on here is my modded world. Now, I said in the last episode, not only that I was going to start up playing modded and I was going to film it and also, you know, put it out to you guys and kind of alternate it with the vanilla series that I'm already doing, but also that I was going to start it prior to, you know, actually filming it and get kind of going. Like, I figured that the first, if you were to start from the very start and do the kind of first episode and whatnot um, in the modded world, it would pretty much just be vanilla. So I'm thinking that the best thing to do was just to kind of get through to a point where it's easier to work with the mods and so on and everything like that. And then, yeah, take it from there. So it was probably the best option for me, um, I'm thinking. But anyway, I started off in this area here and I'm flying. I should mention also because I got the belt of flight, I did that as well. But I started off here for this episode because that's where I spawned in the world. So I figured what I could do from the very start is kind of give you a bit of a quick tour. I'll be as quick as I can. So you'll kind of have to bear with me, but also tell some stories along the way of kind of what happened when I started started up the server. It's not as though it's massively funny or anything. I don't know why I chuckled to myself there, but yeah, it's, um, you know, I figured it would be a good way to go. But um, yeah, you know, I started there, I come around and uh, I noticed this village, which was really cool. So I noticed, you know, we'll get some friends, we'll get some food and it will be really cool. So I kind of set up here and uh, the first night came down and we got some unloaded area here. Unfortunately, it seems to happen quite frequently in this one particular area. Anyway, um, yeah, it came down night time and a villager was getting chased by a zombie. So I decided, you know, attack the villager, kill him and everyone's safe and it's all good. Uh, unfortunately for me, I accidentally hit the villager, which meant the guards, which there are around, there is one left in here, um, decided to attack me. So I... I got scared because this is kind of the first time I've played with mods for a while. Like, I've seen them in mods, like in people playing mod with the mods, I suppose. But I just never played with them myself, so I didn't know what their attitude was like. So, yeah, I decided to run for the hills, and um, yeah, I ended up going for this because I knew there'd be loot there. And then I found this village over here, so I kind of shacked up there for a bit, stole a house, and, and did some stuff. But it's a very small village, as you'll notice, and they don't have any, uh, they don't have a smeltery which was a bit of a hindrance because I knew that that one did over there. So, you know, I figured we'll go back there after some time and see if they'll let us come back, I guess. And so I went back after a while and yeah, they, they did let me come back, which is really cool. So I kind of shacked up here as well. I stole this little house here, which no one was using. It doesn't have a door on it or anything, but I just put my bed down. Seems to be the thing to do. So yeah, just kind of set up here, had my furnaces, had the smeltery there, had some chests up in the back here, you know, I was really set up and it was all good. Got my nether portal eventually, which was cool, I had to plant a whole bunch of trees for wood and whatnot. Unfortunately, we had some creeper accidents around the place, uh, mostly cobblestone to refill them, but yeah, kind of went with the nether rack on that one because I just came out, I just came out of the nether portal, that's right. This one, yeah, didn't fix that one and like, or didn't fix the house. And then this one here, I'm pretty sure this was just, I don't know what happened here. I'm pretty, this is way too big for one creeper. So I don't know what happened here, but I don't think I was a part of it. Anyway, long story short, there are no villagers left, unfortunately, because they pretty much all decided to have a little party in this little pool here, which I think is oil. I'm not sure, but you move really slow and you can't actually jump out of it. You can fly out of it, but you can't jump out of it. So I tried to create these paths to kind of let them out. But they didn't really figure it out and yeah they kind of got attacked and all kind of died and yeah so i couldn't get them out i couldn't save them and i wasn't going to sit around there and i wasn't going to light up the whole area i didn't have the resources i wasn't going to save them so yeah no there's plenty of villages elsewhere so we'll just kind of go with that i suppose um and i had a little mine shaft down there as well which is cool and that leads off to the ender portal which is really cool i had my miscraft stuff here and got some little things in there to get me going but most of my stuff is organized in the miscraft world so i'll go to this one first as you'll see it's titled lava so might give a bit of an indication as to what's going on in this world i've obviously used quite a bit of it as you can see um i've got the ender, ender io pump out there we will go out there as you'll see i'll be able to take damage because uh, it's a bit of an unstable world as you might understand if you've used this mod before uh, but it's pretty much infinite lava I, like, I know it's a finite amount eventually, but, I mean, it's going to be more than I'll ever use, so, obviously, it's uh, infinite in that regard, I guess. Now, I want to point out that I've got a quarry out there, 
um, yeah, I do have a quarry in the overworld. I figured seeing as I'm playing by myself, there's not much point in doing it in a quarry age, although that's what I did at the start. I had a quarry age, but I ran into a few problems, and then that's where I came to the decision to bring it back to the overworld. But as you can see here, I ran it for a while. The issues that I had was that I had the silk touch upgrade on it, so I was not getting much dirt. I was getting a lot of mycelium, which is okay, I guess, but I don't need that as much as I was getting, so I figured I would uh, just take it to the overworld. I'm not ruining the overworld for anyone else because it's just me, so I don't have to worry too much. Um, this is a mostly stable world. It seems as though I just get hunger here, which is easy enough to deal with, in my opinion. And um, yeah, I just kind of got it going for a while and then decided no. So I set it up in the overworld for the time being, and I'll probably keep it there anyway. It allows me to collect collect more interesting stuff because another thing about that quarry age as well is there was no sand and yeah I've currently got it set up in a desert way out there so yeah I figured that's probably the better way to go. I'll go this book next and as you might have seen if you're quick enough it is the end and we'll kind of wait for the it to catch up there but yeah I've uh, I've already dealt with the ender dragon very easy fight as we're all aware. I did have flying I did have the belt of flight before I came here which is an interesting notion if you kind of think about the flow of things, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I didn't kill any of the ender crystal or these crystals here, whatever they're called. Do they actually have a name? Ender crystal? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, but I didn't kill any of those. I just killed him. It was pretty easy to do, you know, standardized fight and all that. And, you know, I can always resurrect him and bring him back and fight him again and again because of the whole draconic evolution thing, I think that's what it is from my interpretation anyway which is really cool and this world here as you'll see is titled AWD AWD because I was kind of unsure as if this would work or not I'm not great with miscraft so I wasn't sure if it was going to be stable or not so I was just typing in random names got a lot of uh, not so good worlds that I don't want to go back to so I destroyed the books but this is my world here it's just a void age um, but you know I can do quite a bit here. I've got open areas to just kind of work and do my thing, so it's going to be really cool in that regard. Just a lot of, it's just going to make it a lot easier, in my opinion. But yeah, I'll give you a little tour around here as well. Uh, we had a spawner up here. At uh, first, I had a zombie spawner, but I changed it to a wither skeleton spawner because uh, I got one of their souls. I do have Reaper 5 on this sword, which I found two books, uh, three books, sorry, th three Reaper 4 books in a stronghold which that stronghold is actually in this void world, it's out there somewhere, so yeah. And I just kind of had them going and collecting their drops with the vacuum hopper and experience from the drum, uh, putting the drums around the back, and then I had experience tanks here. I've got a bit of a cool idea on how to use these, so yeah, we should see that in the future as well. Uh, a bit of Tinker's Construct I brought from the overworld with me. That's my collection of um, seared bricks that, that I just kind of took from every village that I ever come across, I suppose, that had one. And yeah, so yeah, that's what happened with that. And all I use it for now is putting in gold coins. That's pretty much it. That's all I do <laughs> with it, unfortunately. I uh, got my enchanter here, which was really cool, but I was looking for Reaper, and it's not in here. So yeah, I... Um, I actually made this one here to put swords into to see if I could get it that way. Unfortunately, I didn't. Enchanted a lot of gold swords just trying to get it, but didn't get it. I uh, got a disenchanter in case I did get it. Yeah, no, it didn't work out for me. Found them in a chest, as I mentioned. Uh, just got my basic setup here. This block here is really cool. Wireless charger. I can stand anywhere and it will recharge my thing, as long as I'm within the um, sort of area of it. But it will recharge all the rechargeable stuff, I suppose environmental controller with saturation so I don't have to eat around here which is kind of good and kind of bad it's good in the sense that I don't have to eat around here but it's bad in the sense that I barely remember to take food with me when I go out because I don't have to eat here so I forget about eating altogether but I've made a bit of a point of doing it I usually carry some spare in my golden bag of holding here which is actually that steak that I took out because <laughs> I knew that I was going out so I decided to do that Got a couple of resonant machines, probably the two most important ones, pulverizer and induction smelter. I got this really cool uh, augment or upgrade for it, which is the gyro servo. And that allows me to get a plus 81% secondary chance. So yeah, it increases the chance of secondaries, which is this yellow slot here. What I'm doing at the moment, because I have silk touch on my ender quarry, 
I put redstone in here and I'll get redstone dust up in there and also cinnabar down here which is really cool because then I use cinnabar here and an ore there and I'll get three instead of getting two if I was to kind of pulverize it and then just melt the um, the dust so yeah it works out a little bit better to do it this way in my opinion uh, it, you, you get more bang for your buck but it's difficult to kind of get cinnabar there's very few ways to do it I'm working on a way at the moment but I've got to I've, I'm being, I killed, a, that's like, sorry, I'm getting off topic, but I'm mixing myself up at the same time. <laughs> sorry about that. I started up this um, pumpkin farm here, not much, but, you know, just to kind of get some pumpkins so I could farm some snow golems in order to get snow because, and this is the rabbit hole that is modded, I guess, um, what we can do with snow, for example, is make this cryotheum. There we go, gelid cryo or cryothium dust rather, but we need blizz powder, snow, nitre. I use nitre instead of saltpeter and redstone. Blizz powder you can get from blizz rods, which is kind of cool. You can get two just from shapeless crafting, or you can pulverize it for four and get 50% chance for snowball, but then that'd be, you know, e increased by another 81% if I was to put it in my thing, which is really cool. Or, or you can make it with a fluid transposer which takes to stabilize redstone which is just melted down redstone onto a snowball and you'll get one blizz powder so I was trying to make a way to get like without make like without getting a blizz spawner which would be really cool but I haven't found too many in the world unfortunately so I'll keep trying for it but I think the snow golem one was the best way to go just until I get to that point so that'll come up later anyway I've got some really cool ideas for some mob grinder type things which is good. Uh, I've got my applied energistic set up here. Uh, you know, I <laughs> like this is the first time I've ever used this mod, so it's very difficult. It was kind of very difficult to get my head around to kind of work things out, but I found a way to sort of set up the inscribers. Like, it's not a new thing, so, you know, I'm not going to claim like I did something fantastic, but, you know, at least this way I don't have to kind of place them in one by one because they only accept one at a time. I can put them in the chest and the hoppers there. And I got two set up just to make it a bit easier. I think this one does silicon, which I can just see the uh, plate in there. And then whatever else on this side as well. And then, you know, I can kind of mix them together. So that was a good way to go. Got two drive bays and they're full of 64Ks, which are really cool. Um, I'm just, I've got my ender quarry here, which is just going off its head. It's working at 4,500, which I'm still generating more power because I've got a whole bunch of lava jennies down there, which is really cool. So it's keeping it all active, which is really, really good. So, yeah, but I'm thinking, you know, the first thing that I want to do in this world, uh, you know, with in, in regards to you guys, I guess, you know, like this series is make a new area because obviously this won't suffice. This is good enough to start with, like I have been, but obviously now I'm at a point where I need to kind of move out. So i got to consider the most important thing. And I guess the most important thing for me at the moment is to um, have somewhere to house everything so storage would be the best one to go with and I'm thinking what I can do is kind of find an area that I've got enough space in which I'm thinking is out here somewhere I don't want to go too far from the starter platform but it'd be nice if it was out of render distance just to kind of keep it away because it's not no nah, it's not pretty now I'm gonna go down to Y level 50 I think here um, and then I'm just gonna I'm, does it place at my feet so if I stand on that, is it at Y level 50? It's at Y level 51. I'll tell you what. We'll try and get that one right. Um, so how did that work? So if I go at 50 and place it, then it's at 50. Okay, good. All right, so I got my angel block there, and I'll be able to build a platform out, which would be really cool as well. So, yeah, you know, I'm thinking what I could do is build the platform out over there and get some work done. And yeah, like how good would it be if in modded you could get it to kind of build itself? Whoa, okay, well I'm glad that's a thing. <laughs> oh, thank God for modded, right? Anyway, so this is the platform that I've got going so far. Nice clean white texture at the moment. We can consider that to be a floor, am I right? Um, you know, it's not gonna be a roof, it's flat, because roofs aren't flat, except for roofs that are flat, but you know, this is not a roof, this is a floor. I wouldn't have put a roof at Y level 50, I don't think. I think I would have kept that a lot higher, but yeah, this is the kind of area that I'm thinking to work on. 
I think it's going to be enough space for storage. What do you reckon? Especially considering, and you know, the store, the type of storage that I'm going to be doing is with a uh, with the applied energistics. So I'll have a bunch of 64Ks and drives and ca cables and. <laughs> All that kind of stuff, but it's all going to live in this area, and I'm going to model my build off something that already exists. So, yeah, we'll kind of see how that goes, but let's get that going, uh, I would say, right about now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh man, okay, so a few things to mention about that one. I haven't done a time lapse like that in a while, so I hope that it's good. And uh, yeah, this is the build. That roof, I just gotta say, that roof. Um, <laughs> I think it looks good, I really do. But uh, look, you know, that's all those strips there, they're micro blocks, and yeah, there is no easy way to place them. I over, I, I, I didn't kind of understand this, I guess, or I didn't estimate for this to happen, or whatever it is, however you want to say it. Yeah, I just, yeah, that took me <laughs> longer than I'd care to mention, probably, but yeah, I'm probably looking around three hours or so, or yeah, three hours or so to do that whole roof there. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I just had to click them all into place, and they're strips, but I doubled up. So there's a strip there and a strip there, uh, and then, you know, so there's two strips per block, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it's quite a fair bit, and I think it looks good, and, you know, I'm kind of, I'm really happy with it, but, yeah, at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, I'm also unsure about the roof. It seems as though it extends a little too far. Um, now... The I I did mention also that this um this build is kind of modeled on something that does exist. I I kind of tried to go from a picture like and it's a bird's eye picture, so all you can see is the roof anyway. So that's kind of what I went for, like a corrugated sort of effect, I guess. Um, but I remember seeing a picture a long time ago about uh I think it's like Facebook's data center or something like that, and it's just a massive sort of shed big warehouse sort of thing and um you know it's in a very cold place so that they can save on um you know cooling and all that so electricity and whatnot but that's essentially what i was going for because i'm thinking you know this is it's dark in here i gotta get some lighting done but that's gonna be for the next episode getting all the uh interior done support beams and all that kind of stuff and we can make it look prettier in there it's not going to be a solid white floor all the way you know there's going to be different stuff going on and then there's going to be stuff inside the room as well so yeah and like I was saying about the roof, I'm not too sure about it. I think that it extends a little too, a little too far, just kind of takes away from the build. But I went with a bit of a flat roof, you know, I didn't want to go too high. Uh, considering the size of the build, I was thinking that it would be a little bit... Yeah, I, think, I was thinking going high wouldn't work. Plus for the style that I was kind of going for, yeah, I thought it wouldn't work either. And, you know, I just kind of went with this easy step up, step down, and kind of equal on both sides sort of thing, which was easy enough to do, I suppose. And then, yeah, I just kind of guessed what the uh, the building should look like down here and made up <laughs> made it up as I went, I suppose. So, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for that one, I think. I think that's pretty pretty good as far as it goes. Um, I, I do enjoy it. I, I do like it. These are all pretty much made out. It's a, pretty much entirely made out of concrete blocks. There's concrete, uh, weathered concrete um, strips and then, uh, like, partially weathered concrete and then just normal concrete and then partially weathered, weathered with a uh, border around it and then you know slabs, <laughs> double slabs rather except for this one, uh, this is a uh, factory block which is so is the ground it's just, oh the floor sorry yeah that's pretty much that and yeah like I said I'm thinking this is going to be a decent size for a like I'm calling it a data center because I'm going to be dealing with having all of those 64k's in there and drive bays and all that sort of stuff so it's going to kind of look like a server but I can tell you after about three plus hours of doing that my hand is absolutely killing me I haven't clicked my mouse that much since Diablo and you now I'm thinking <laughs> I think it's about time to hang up the rain and and leave it for today uh, I think that's about all I can do in this episode uh, I've done quite a bit of talking you know I guess the first part of the episode was a bit of an intro and then we got a bit of a build in as well and a time lapse if everything went well I'm, I'm just gonna say that just in case something goes wrong but yeah guys I think that's gonna do it for this episode thanks for watching be sure to give me a thumbs up because I know I can't at the moment my, my hand is stuck <laughs> um, yeah and I hope you enjoyed it subscribe all that stuff if you're new and uh, yeah I'll see you next week in a vanilla my vanilla one so yeah see you later